proudly we hail. Hello from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. This is C.P. McGregor speaking and welcoming you to another performance of Proudly We Hail, a program presented by your War Department. Through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, we welcome Mr. Chester Morris as the star of our play, The Idea Merchant, written by Richard Hall with music by Eddie Scrivanik. <laughs> Unveiling of the new season's model was always an advance at R.J. Brown and Company, more so than ever before with the transportation problem in the country the way it was. And the old man fairly beamed as he showed his first model off the production line to his publicity director, Johnny Everett. <laughs> well, Johnny, what do you think? Oh, she's beautiful, R.J., beautiful. You like that chrome line there? Yes. Doesn't that give her sweet? Oh, it's nice. You know, we're way ahead of all the others, R.J., Way ahead. Hey, we've got a lot of talking points, too. Mechanical brakes for safety, heavier springs and finer interiors, individual wheel suspension. Yes, sir, R.J., this year we've done it. We've turned out the finest baby buggy ever built. <laughs> That's right, Johnny. We've got the greatest product we've ever had. And now we need promotion. Lots of it. Oh, I'm going right after it, R.J. We need a great idea to put it over. Well, I want to see this picture, Johnny. I want to see every mother in America wheeling her baby along, looking down at her cooing infant and loving eyes, and seeing the label, R.J. Brown, made in Bridgeport. I got you, R.J., and I promise you I'll come up with an idea that'll knock your eyes out. Well, R.J., R.J., I've got it. The idea to start off the whole campaign. Oh, you have, Johnny? Wonderful idea, wonderful. You remember when we entered an R.J. Brown baby buggy in the soapbox derby finals? Yes, yes. And matched the fastest elapsed time? Yes, yes. Well, this yes. tops it. Remember the time we presented our first model to the Smithsonian Institute with a humming Mother McCree in the background? Yes, oh, that was a pit, Yes, Johnny. <laughs> but it doesn't hold a candle to this. It doesn't. Well, well, what have you got? Let's hear it, Johnny. All right. <laughs> now, get this, R.J. The big ball game is New Year's Day. Yes. yes. We're there. Thousands of people in the stands. Uh -huh. The newsreels and all the press wire services covering it. We're at the halftime ceremonies. Suddenly, suddenly out of the sky above, an auto gyro settles to the earth. Yeah. The mother of the year steps out to be presented a cash award and an R.J. Brown baby buggy. Oh, that sounds great. Of course <laughs> it's great. Do you get the symbolism? The auto gyro, flapping wings, almost like a stork. A stork. Oh, yeah, but you haven't heard the topper. Thousands of people waiting to greet the mother of the year. But when the auto gyro lands and the door is open... <laughs> Out steps Lassie and seven little pups. Yeah, no, 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 no. Wait a minute now, Johnny. I don't like that switch. What? We don't need it. No? Uh, no, no, Johnny. I, I think we should do it straight. Oh. Get the real mother of the year. Say the mother who has the most children. She deserves it. Well, maybe you're right. Oh, uh, but that's great work, Johnny. Now, let's get it all set up. Plan it, Johnny. Carefully anticipate trouble before it happens. Uh, oh, by the way, how did you manage to arrange it with the colleges? Why, it was simple. You see, the Prexy's daughter is going to have a baby at one school. Uh -huh. So I promised to send over one of our deluxe models. Oh, that's a scene. That's yes, a scene. and the other school's football team needed a new water wagon. I told them we'd make up one special. That's fair enough. Uh, do we get compliments, R.J. Brown, on the side of it? Well, they're taking it up at the next meeting of the Board of Trustees, but I doubt it. Uh, well, it doesn't really matter, Johnny, but now get to work on it and plan everything very carefully. I don't want any slip-ups on this idea. It's too great. <laughs> Hello, Judy. Did you hear from the governor? Oh, yes, Johnny. And the governor himself will make the presentation. Oh, that's great. Big Sam Johnson making the presentation. <laughs> oh, and he'll also make a speech. <laughs> well, that's bad. Well, we'll just have to limit his time, that's all. Oh, that's a king-size job in itself if you know Big Sam Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, incidentally, uh, the governor wants you to be sure that the speaker stand is good and strong. You know, at a speech at the state fair, they, they had to get a Derek to extricate him from the plywood when he fell through. <laughs> no plywood in this job, Peaches. We'll make it out of concrete if necessary. Oh, Johnny, that's solid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Judy. Yes, Johnny? Maybe, uh, maybe I'll get a salary raise out of this. Then, uh, then you and I can go into business for sure. Oh, Johnny, I hope so. Well, I know so. 
Oh, by the way, Judy, who's our mother of the year? Oh, uh, she's Mrs. Emily Frisbee of Toledo. Twenty-six children. Oh, I wish we could top that. Oh. But then that's pretty good. Hmm, you think so? Yes. She, uh, she doesn't get air sick or anything, does she? Well, I haven't asked her. Well, we'll find out. And now on New Year's Day, you and I will work at the airport. Uh, to make sure there are no slip-ups. Oh, but Johnny will miss the game. Well, who cares about missing the game if this comes off? An urgent call for Mr. R.J. Brown at the ticket office. An urgent call for Mr. R.J. Brown. <laughs> Hello, boss. Uh, what's up, Johnny? We're in trouble, boss. Oh, don't tell me that. Yep, it's the auto gyro. One of the spark plugs won't work. It won't start. Well, surely you can get another spark plug? We're trying to now. Oh, why don't you think of these things? You said anticipate trouble. Why don't you have a spare in your pocket? I'm sorry, boss. Now you listen. You better get our mother of the year down here by halftime or you're through. I don't know how we can make it. Well, hire a jet. Do something but get her down here. We pause briefly from our story, The Idea Merchant, starring Chester Morris, to bring you an important message from your war department. You remember when you were a kid how you'd ride your bicycle, no hands? Well, the Army has developed a plane the pilot can fly, no hands or feet either. Yes, push-button flying is an accomplished fact. Technicians of your new regular army developed and successfully tested planes that take off, fly, and land with no human hand at the controls. This is just one of countless accomplishments of army scientists and their unending program of research and development. Each day, they're adding new discoveries. Every man, from the one who services these amazing new machines to the one who designs them, is a skilled man. For a work of this kind, the army needs intelligent, progressive men to train for individual jobs. Each soldier is a part of a program of scientific advancement. Here is an opportunity for aggressive young men between 17 and 34, the chance for a worthwhile career. See your local army recruiting station today about the advantages of a three-year enlistment in the regular army. <laughs> Act two of The Idea Merchant, starring Chester Morris as Johnny Everett, publicity director of R.J. Brown and Company, makers of the only baby buggy with the built-in bottle holder. Johnny Everett is in quite a fix. He's at the airport with Judy and Mrs. Frisbee, miles from the stadium. The auto gyro won't start, and time is running out. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Well, uh, we could get a cabin plane and uh, parachute down. Don't joke at a time like this. Oh, Johnny, then why don't you do what I suggested ten minutes ago? Forget the auto gyro and grab a cab. We might be able to get across town in time. Well, maybe you're right. Oh, but Judy, those flapping wings. I hate to give them up. They're so symbolic. Mm, they aren't flapping now. You're telling me. Uh, where's Mrs. Frisbee? Oh, she's over there sitting down. She says she's never had so much excitement since she had her fifth set of twins. Well... Get her and let's go. We'll, we'll try the cab. Can't you, can't you go any faster, driver? I'm sorry, boss, but I got her floored now. Well, what's the matter with this cement mixer? She's missing. Been missing all week. Hey, but please don't refer to the means of my livelihood as a cement mixer. She's sensitive. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you see? Now, listen, I don't want any more trouble. Get this beautiful, streamlined limousine to the stadium as fast as you can. Yeah, you see? That's music to her ears. <laughs> Let's hurry. I think we're going to make it. I think we're going to make it. And there's the gun ending the third quarter. Oh, stabbed in the heart, Judy. Well, it's too late. No sense in going in now. Oh, I guess you're right. Oh, Mrs. Frisbee, I apologize. For each one of your children, I apologize. Oh, don't do that, Mr. Everett. We'd be here all night. <laughs> oh, but you've been swell, and you'll still receive your cash reward, Mrs. Frisbee. Oh, 
really? Oh, yes, and the baby buggy. Oh, how nice. As a matter of fact, uh, could you use two baby buggies? Uh, one slightly damaged? Why, why, yes. Well, I think I can promise you an extra one. After what happened today, when I walk into the boss's office, he'll probably throw one at me. Oh. <laughs> Judy, take Mrs. Frisbee back to her hotel, will you? All right. I've got to figure out what I'm going to tell R.J. at the office tomorrow. <laughs> I tell him. I know. I'll, I'll tell him I was taking an extension course in auto gyro mechanics. Yes, that's it. But I, I hadn't reached the chapter on spark plugs. Oh, no, no, that won't work. Uh-oh, here he comes. Oh, well, well, Johnny, my boy. <laughs> you can talk uh, like that? Why, of course. You're not worried about what happened yesterday, are you? Well, maybe I'm not, but my fingernails are. Oh, why, Johnny, it worked out better than we planned it. The governor was delighted. He had more time to speak. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Why, sure. And you remember how we had it set up? The speaker's platform and our baby buggy below it with the sign? Mm, yes. <laughs> well, Big Sam Johnson leaned against the protecting rail, fell through, and landed smack in our baby buggy, right between the B and R in brown. He did? Yes, all the wire services got the picture. And the governor has issued this statement. That baby buggy undoubtedly saved my life. Well, for, for th th that's phenomenal. Yes, and what's more, Mrs. Frisbee runs a foundling home. No. Uh-huh, and one of her sons is a congressman. Oh, oh, wait a minute, R.J., I've got it. We present her with a baby buggy for every one of the children in her foundling home, right on the Capitol steps, with her congressman's son looking on. Oh, now you're talking, Oh, John. but I'm only getting started. Why, when I get through with this, I'll have the name R.J. Brown in the congressional record. <laughs> This is C.P. McGregor speaking. I hope you've enjoyed our Proudly We Hail story starring Chester Morris. Before leaving you, Don Forbes has an important message for all of us. What will life in the near future be like? Here are some of the items that will make living for you so much easier. You'll make use of rugged, compact walkie-talkie radios with the same ease and frequency that you now use your telephone. Your home will have rust-proof mosquito netting. You will use an all-purpose soap, even for brushing teeth, that is equally effective in hot or cold water. Waterproof matches will light after six hours' immersion. You will ride comfortably in planes that fly over 700 miles per hour. Pilotless aircraft will carry freight shipments from coast to coast. A machine that can make split-second calculations a thousand times faster than any other computing machine now exists. It will be instrumental in the development of television, weather forecasting, and similar fields. Amazing new techniques in disease control and surgery will be commonplace. This is a mode of living made possible for you by the United States Army. All these advancements in the standard of living are not guesswork. They are actual accomplishments. The Army is engaged in a continuing and comprehensive program of experimentation, discovery, and development in the fields of science. Already you know some of these revolutionary achievements. Already the Army is employing these accomplishments for the betterment of civilization. The sniper scope is a device that makes it possible for one to see in the dark by use of invisible light. It was of great value to our soldiers in combat and is being converted to civilian purposes. Some of the greatest engineering and construction projects like Bonneville Dam are the products of army technicians. All these mark the beginning of countless new accomplishments. A three-year enlistment in the new regular army is the start of a modern and beneficial career. Today's soldier is a skilled, educated man, master at the job for which he is trained. Any army recruiting station will be glad to explain the work of the new regular army. Thank you, Chester Morris, for a wonderful portrayal. Proudly We Hail will come to you again over this station next week. Listen in. <laughs>